Uh, the Vox? Because I, I guess I kind of want to watch this, guys. I want to get educated a little bit. I want to learn a little bit. Oh, uh, guys, guys. Mozzy, can anybody uh, look at this a little bit further up and see if there's any Taws in there? Taws, 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 Taws. Putin called. It's called Putin's War on Ukraine Explained. This a special military operation, but it's clear this is a full scale. Guys, sometimes Vox is a little bit biased. So if there if there's something that's clearly misinformation or or not real, just, or you know, just tell me. Invasion. Как у нас пламя было выше дома. We're like in a cellar. I'm not sure if it's like deep enough to help us to survive. Russian troops and tanks have entered Ukraine on all fronts. All these cities are under attack, including the capital of Kyiv, which has become Putin's main target. Many are sheltering in basements and metro stations across Ukraine. There have been hundreds of casualties, and over half a million Ukrainians have been forced to flee their homes. This is one of Europe's largest wars since World War II. Since then, Europe's map has been no toss, right? shaped by political alliances. But now, Putin wants to redraw Europe's map by force. Современная Украина целиком и полностью была создана Россией. Putin has long claimed Ukraine belongs to Russia and they are one people. We're not just close neighbors, we're one nation. But Ukraine is a sovereign nation with its own language, culture and political system. And while the two countries do have a shared history, Ukraine has fought hard for its own identity. Ukraine was part of the Russian Empire in the 18th and 19th centuries. In 1917, the Russian Revolution brought down the empire and the region spiraled into a civil war. Ukraine briefly gained independence from Russian rule, but was quickly taken over by the newly created Soviet Union as one of its first republics. Over the next decade, the Soviet Union brutally expanded its control. And by the end of World War II, it forged a sphere of influence over here, while the West held its influence over here, essentially dividing Europe and marking the beginning of the Cold War. The Soviet Union yeah, installed all, communist governments on their side, which were easy for them to control. But the West developed into democracies with capitalist economies. Natural. The deep ideological divide fueled distrust and... Guys, I know about this, guys. I know about this, okay? ...tensions between the two sides. We learned about this. And soon, these spheres hardened into military alliances. In 1949, these countries, along with the US and Canada, formed the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO and promised to defend each other from invasion. A few years later, these countries joined the Soviet-led Warsaw Pact Alliance, and each side built up its military to protect itself from the other. Europe remained this way for decades, until one side finally collapsed. By late 1991, hmm? republics like Ukraine began declaring independence from Soviet domination. The Soviet Union dissolved into 15 independent countries, including a much weaker Russia. And the Soviet sphere of influence disappeared as many countries overthrew their communist governments. Even though the Cold War ended, the alliance on the other side of Europe was still going strong. In fact, it was expanding. In 1999, Poland, Hungary and the Czech Republic joined NATO. In 2004, seven more countries joined. That moved NATO into the old Soviet sphere of influence, making NATO's border with Russia the longest it's ever been. But guys, just a question, chat, guys, guys. Are these countries that were like not very problematic with Russia, or like not not very uh, uh, in, in like tense situations, or whatever? It seems like it's harder to get for the people to get into NATO if if they have uh, ongoing conflicts with with Russia or whatnot. No. Belarus, Ukraine, and Georgia were now the last post-Soviet countries left between Russia and NATO. But Ukraine and Georgia both wanted to join NATO for a long time, and that made them prime targets okay, for correct. Russia. Got it, I got it right. Ukraine became a NATO partner in 1994, which brought them a step closer to becoming a member. Ukraine will be in NATO. This is a historic event for our people. And in 2013, they reached an association agreement with the European Union. But when it came time to sign the deal, Ukraine's pro-Russian government refused. Instead, they chose to strengthen ties with Russia. After the decision was announced, hundreds of thousands of protesters took to the streets, 
to demand the agreement be signed. Guys, 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 could that be partially or, 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 or a lot partially because of the, all, the, all the pipelines and shit, all the, uh, the social economical reasons and whatnot uh, uh, behind some of this? Instead, they chose to strengthen ties with Russia. After the no. decision was announced, hundreds of thousands of protesters it's took to the streets more it, sure. to demand the agreement be signed. After months of peaceful protests, the Ukrainian president cracked down and killed more than 100 people, sparking more protests, which eventually drove the president out of office and the country. Huh? This meant Putin Wait, was losing country. political influence over Ukraine. So he decided to use force instead. First, he invaded and annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. Whoa, wait, then, wait, 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 what? Political influence over Ukraine. So he decided to use force instead. First, he invaded and annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. Then, Russia-backed separatists captured the regions of Donetsk and Luhansk and declared them independent of Ukraine. Since then, Ukraine has been locked in a conflict with Russia that has killed 14,000 people. Oh, and oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So then, then Russia takes Crimea, right? And Crimea doesn't have a lot of water and whatnot and food and whatnot because it's very hard to get there and it's very arid and whatnot, right? And then their only source of water, then, then Ukraine uh, builds a, a cement blockade that blocks all the water from coming in. And now, now, now this is dwindling down and it's... it's, uh, it's Displaced nearly 2 million. For nearly eight years, Putin has held on to these regions, destabilizing Ukraine and keeping it from moving closer to the West. But in November 2021, Putin decided to go all in. Satellite images showed at least 100,000 Russian troops and military equipment piling up along the border of Ukraine. Putin repeatedly denied any plans to invade. But weeks later, he presented his demands to the West. His main demand was that NATO stop expanding and move its military borders back to where they were in 1997, what? away from Russia's okay, Western... Okay, and I want three Ferraris in my garage now. What, leaders what rejected his demands. Instead, they put forces on standby and reinforced their military presence in Eastern Europe. Back at Ukraine's border, Russian troops continued to gather. Guys, guys, let's say in those demands, right? Let's, let's say in any crazy world where this would actually happen, what happens to all the people and their culture and their language? What with the people that live in those? What happens then? They all they all just just become ra Russianated. What happens then? They were in 1997, away from Russia's Western leaders. Re well, I don't get it. Rejected back to where his main demand was that NATO stop expanding and move its military borders back to where they were in 1997. Oh, it's military away borders. From Russia's Western leaders rejected his demands. Instead, they put forces on standby and reinforced their military presence in Eastern Europe. Back at Ukraine's border, Russian troops continued to gather. And over here, along its border with Belarus, Russia began conducting huge military drills. On February 21st, the threat of war became real. I think признать независимость и суверенитет Донецкой Народной Республики и Луганской Народной Республики. His troops immediately crossed the Ukrainian border into Russian-backed separatist regions under the pretense of peacekeeping. Ukraine announced a state of emergency and President Zelensky made a direct appeal to the Russian people. Война лишит гарантий всех. Гарантий безопасности не будет больше ни у кого. Кто от этого пострадает больше всего? Люди. Кто этого не хочет больше всего? Люди. Кто может этого не допустить? Люди. Hours later, on February 24th, Putin launched a full-scale invasion in Ukraine. Специальной военной операции. World oh, leaders oh, have so spoken out against special. Russia's invasion. We condemn this barbaric attack and the cynical arguments to justify it. This hideous and barbaric venture of Vladimir Putin must end in failure. Putin chose this war, and now he and his country will bear the consequences. Anti-war protests have broken man, out guys, around I, I said, the world. Man, guys, that's the last time I said again, guys, guys, whenever he speaks, man, guys, the lack of char charisma that, that his voice carries is so, is, is, I think it's so problematic, dude. 
Dude, dude, it's hard to get behind what he's saying, and it's hard to be say, yeah, I'm on board. It, it, not uh, uh, in this ideology, but I think with everything, you could say, it is time to eat dinner. Okay, I mean, I mean. He and his country will okay. bear the consequences. Anti-war protests have broken out around the world, including in Russia, despite the risk of arrest. Neighboring nations have opened their borders as hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians attempt to flee. NATO's response force has been activated. I didn't elect him. You want to say you? I'm Canadian. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to vote, but just I didn't, I didn't elect shit. For the first time in history, and the U.S. has sent additional troops and what are the to option? Eastern Europe. What are the options? But in many ways, Slippy Joe, Orange Guy, or Kanye West, motherfucker. What the fuck is that going to do? What am I going to do? Is the world is treading carefully. Putin controls the world's largest arsenal of nuclear weapons and has already threatened anyone who might interfere. So countries around the world are imposing some of the harshest economic sanctions to slow Putin down and sending tons of military aid to support Ukraine. For now, Russian forces keep pushing deeper, but Ukraine is fighting back. Jesus. Well, that's no joke. Okay. Uh, guys, I feel like last video that we watched, um, we learned a lot about this. And I feel like uh, this didn't really say anything. Um, but for people that aren't very informed, I feel like it's a, it's a good recap for sure.